In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at synthetic division and specifically dividing by a quartic polynomial. At the end, I'm going to generalize a little bit. I've done videos on dividing by a linear expression, um, a trinomial, a quadratic, and a cubic. This is the quartic. Uh, so there is certainly a pattern, so we'll get into that near the end. Uh, so let's say that you're, you, were, uh, you were told that this quartic expression is a factor of this uh, seventh degree polynomial. So you're asked, what would the other factor be? So, you know, we're looking for some other factor that if we were to multiply it by this, we would end up with this expression here. So we would need to divide this quartic into this long polynomial here. So the first thing that I would do is I would write out the coefficients of this. So 2, negative 3, 10, et cetera here, negative 7, negative 7, 23, and negative 2. Uh, remember, if you're ever doing this and there's a term, I'll say this kind of in quotation marks, missing, like let's say it went from x to the fifth to x cubed. So there, let's say there was no x to the fourth term. So you would make sure that you would put a zero in, like if that term didn't exist, we put a zero here, okay? Uh, because it's like a placeholder, okay? So this means the constant term, linear, quadratic, cubic to the power of four, five, six, and seven. So uh, I should say to the exponent of. So the next thing that you do is make this division symbol. And it's quite lengthy here. Uh, there's a lot of rows because we're dividing by a quartic. So and uh, the reason this goes here is because this is our, our quotient's going to go here. Our answer is going to go here. And you see, think of this. If I'm dividing an x to the exponent 7 by an x to the exponent 4, I should expect my answer to have an x to the exponent 3 in it, a cubic. And so we need four places for that linear. I'm, I'm sort of... Um, you know, going below these. So that's the linear term, sorry, the constant term. This would be the linear term. This would be the quadratic term. And then cubic. So you need four places. And everything to the right of that is going to be where the remainder is. So um, now I'm going to put these lines here. So there's one, two, th there's three lines here. Um, this one just has to have ro room enough for one row of numbers, but each of these has two. Okay, so um, when you're doing synthetic division, because I'm I'm dividing by a quartic, okay, uh, exponent four, I need four rows. Okay, if you're dividing by a cubic, you need three. A quadratic, you need two. Okay, a linear, you only need one. Okay, so um, this is what we're dividing by. So um, what if there's a leading coefficient that's not one, uh, and it's two in this case, you need to divide out that two. Okay, so 2x to the exponent 4 divided by 2 would be x to the exponent 4. Um, 2 doesn't go into negative 3 evenly, so this is negative 3 halves x cubed. Now, notice that there's no x squared term, so we're ready to 0x squared, uh, just like I was talking to up, up here. Uh, 4x divided by 2 is 2x, negative 1 divided by 2 is negative 1 half. And so the coefficients from here, except we don't use the one at the beginning. We start at the negative 3 halves. They go over here. You also change the sign. So it'll be positive 3 halves. Of course, 0 has no sign, so don't worry about the, the sign there. Uh, negative 2 and positive 1 half. So that's what goes over here. 3, 0, negative 2, 1 half. 3, 0, negative 2, 1 half. Okay, opposite signs of these coefficients. And so now we're ready to start the, um, the division. So the 2 comes straight down. The negative 3 would come down to the second from the bottom row. The 10 would come down for the next one up, and the negative 7, seven comes down 1. Okay? So uh, again, we're divided by a quartic, so there's four of these numbers to drop down. If it's a cubic, there'd be 3. So the now that we have a number in the, the bottom here, we're going to multiply each of these four numbers by that 2. So uh, 3 halves times 2. Um, is 3, so we're going to put that 3 right here. Uh, 0 times 2, of course, is 0, so that'll go here. These numbers that we're going to write always go in the diagonal. And basically, when the diagonal is finished, we have no more room to put it. The division's done. Okay, let's move across here. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, and a half times 2, or a half of 2 is 1, so we put the 1 here. And then we add. Negative 3 and 3 is 0. 10 and 0 is 10. Negative 7 negative 4 adds negative 11. Negative 7 and 1 adds negative 6. Uh, 
So now we have another number down here in the bottom. So we multiply these four numbers by that zero. And of course, anything times zero is zero, so these numbers are all zeros. So we put a zero here, zero here, zero here, and a zero below the 20. And we add. So 10 and zero adds to 10. Negative 11 and zero adds negative 11. See, this is going to be negative six, and this is going to be 20. So now we have a third number down here. So all four of these numbers get to be multiplied by the 10. So 3 halves times 10, you think of 3 halves as 1.5, 1.5 tens is 15. So we put a 15 here. Of course, 0 times 10 is 0, so we're going to put a 0 there. Uh, negative 2 times 10 is negative 20. And a half times 10, or a half of 10, is 5. So we put that there, and we add again. So negative 11 added to 15 is 4. Negative 6 and 0 adds negative 6. 20 and negative 20, they're opposites. They add 0. 3 and 5 add to 8. Okay. So uh, notice that we're getting close to the right side here. Okay. Um, so we have a fourth number in the bottom here. So again, these four numbers get multiplied by that 4. Uh, 3 halves, or 1.5 times 4, is 6. So we're going to put 6 here. 0 times 4, of course, is 0. So 0 goes there. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8 goes there. And last of the diagonals, a half times 4 is 2. So notice we don't have any room to keep going across our diagonals to put four numbers, like there's no space over here. So we're done once we add here and bring the numbers down. So negative 6 and 6 adds to 0. Now 0 and 0 adds to 0. 8 and negative 8 are opposite, so they add to 0. Negative 2 and 2 add to 0. Okay, and so just like we had numbers we brought down, so this comes down, this zero comes down, this zero comes down. So notice our remainder is, is zero. Th there's four places here and it's in divisions where it's not a factor. Um, you know, this would be the constant term, linear, quadratic, cubic. Um, so it's all zeros. So the remainder is zero, so it means it is a factor of. Okay, that's what uh, remainder zero means. So what we would do is now write out what this division tells us. So it basically, I'll write out the whole thing, it basically tells us that this long polynomial here is equal to, now this would be 2x cubed, now no x squareds, okay, uh, plus 10x plus 4 times, um, now this polynomial, this is what we actually did in the division. See those numbers up there represent this polynomial, so that's this. Now we weren't actually asked to divide by this to find this factor. We were asked to divide by 2x to the fourth. So remember, these are these are pretty closely related. Um, this one here is just this one divided by 2. So there's a 2 that factors out of this trinomial here. So we factor the 2 out and we multiply it into this one. So when you factor a 2 out of this, of course you're dividing 2 into all the uh, the terms, so that's why it's x cubed now and just 5x and, and 2. And so after factoring that 2 out, we multiply it into this polynomial here. So 2 times x to the fourth is 2x to the fourth. Uh, 2 times the 3 halves is going to be 2, so that's going to be negative uh, 3x cubed. I didn't bother write the x squared term. 2 times 2x is 4x, and 2 times negative a half is negative 1. So now we can say what the factor is because, see, we're asked to divide this polynomial by this quartic. There's the quartic right there. So this is the other factor. So the other factor is x cubed plus 5x plus 2. So these two uh, polynomials multiply to give us this 7 degree polynomial. Now, uh, I said I was going to give you a summary at the end here. So um, when you're dividing by a quartic, uh, you need four rows here. The top one is always just for one row of numbers. The rest are always for uh, two rows of numbers. Um, so, and you're again, you're always putting these numbers here that after you multiply this by numbers in the bottom here, always go in the diagonal. You stop when you get to the end. Um, if this was a cubic we were dividing by, then we'd only, like this, this line in the bottom would be right here. We'd only need three cubic, you need three. If it was a quadratic we're dividing by, you'd need two. If it's a linear expression you're dividing by, you just need the one, the one row of numbers. So so you can expand that to 
um, dividing by higher degree polynomials. For example, if you're dividing by a, a fifth degree polynomial, then we need five of these rows here. Uh, the top one would just need one row of numbers in and everyone else has two. Okay, So you could divide by any any degree polynomial really with synthetic division and follow the same pattern. So that's how uh, synthetic divisions works. division works for dividing by a quartic or a higher uh, degree polynomial. And that's the end of the tutorial.